Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be covering Numbers 20 through 22 and Mark 7, 1 through 13. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Water from the Rock Numbers 20 In the first month, the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zin, and they stayed at Kadesh. There, Miriam died and was buried. Now, there was no water for the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, if only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Why did you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness? That we and our livestock should die here. Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grain or figs, grapevines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting, and they fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord said to Moses, Take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water and you will bring water out of the rock for the community so that they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, and just as he commanded him, he and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels! Must we bring you water out of a rock? Then Moses raised his arms and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out of it, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. There, uh, these were the waters of Meribah, where the Israelites quarreled with the Lord, and where he was provided holy among them. Edom denies Israel's passage. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom, saying, This is what your brother Israel says. You know about all the hardships that have come on us. Our ancestors went down into Egypt, and we lived there many a year. The Egyptians min uh, mistreated us and our ancestors, but we cried out to our Lord, and he heard our cry, and he sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now we are here at Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your country. We will not go through the, any of your fields or vineyards or drink water from your, any of your wells. We will travel along the king's highway and not turn to the right or turn to the left. We have passed through your till we have passed through your territory. But Edom answered, You may not pass through here. If you try we will march out and attack you with the sword. The Israelites replied, We will go along the main road, and if we or our livestock drink any of your water, we will pay for it. And we only want to pass through on foot, nothing else. Again, they answered, You may not pass through. 
then Edom came out against them with a large and powerful army. And since Edom refused to let them go through their territory, Israel turned away from them. The death of Aaron. The whole Israelite community set out from Kadesh and came to Mount Har. And at Mount Har, near the border of Edom, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will not enter the land I gave I give the Israelites because both of you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Get Aaron and his son Eleazar and take them up on Mount Horn. Remove Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eleazar. For Aaron will be gathered to his people and he will die there. Moses did as the Lord commanded. They went up Mount Hara and in sight of the whole uh, community. Moses removed Aaron, uh, Aaron's garments and put them on his son Eleazar. And Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. And when the whole community learned that Aaron had died, all the Israelites mourned for him thirty days. Arad destroyed. Numbers 21. When the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming along the road to Athram, he attacked the Israelites and captured some of them. Then Israel made view, uh, this vow to the Lord. If you will deliver these people into our hands, we will totally destroy their cities. The Lord listened to Israel's plea, and he gave the Canaanites over to them. They completely destroyed them and their towns, so the place was named Harma, the bronze snake. They traveled from Mount Har along the route to the Red Sea. To go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. And they spoke against God and against Moses. And they said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest the this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses, and they said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and he put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived the journey to Moab. The Israelites moved on and camped at Aboth. And then they set out from Aboth and they camped at Ai, Ebram, in the wilderness that faced Moab towards the sunrise. From there they moved on and camped in the Zerid Valley. They sat out from there and camped alongside the Arnon, which is the wilderness extending into Amorite territory. The Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Ammonites. That is why the book of the wars of the Lord says, Zahab 
in Zephha and the ravens, the Aaron. You're not. And the slopes of the ravens that lead to the settlement of Ar and lie along the border of Moab. From there they continued to in on to Beer. The well where the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, spring, sing about it. About the well that the princes dug, that the nobles of the people sank, the nobles with scepters and staffs. And they went from the wilderness to Matatanah, from Matna to Nehali, and from Nehali to Bamoth and from Bamoth to the valley of Moab, where the top of Phisagag overlooks the wasteland. Defeat of Sihon and Og Israel sent messengers to say to Sihon, king of the Amorites, Let us pass through your country. We will not turn aside into any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sihon would not let Israel pass through his territory. He mustered his entire army and he marched out into the wilderness against Israel. And when he reached Jehaz, he fought with Israel. And Israel, however, put him to the sword, and they took over his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, but only as far as the Amorite, uh, Ammonites, because their border was fortified. Israel captured all the cities of the Amorites and occupied them, including Heshbon and all its surrounding settlements. Heshbon was the city of Sahan, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former, uh, former king of Moab and had taken from him all his land as far as the Arnon. That is why the poets say, Come to Aharb Hashbon and let it be rebuilt. Let Sihon's city be restored. Fire went out from Hashbon, a blaze from the city of Sihon. It comes, it consumed Ar of Moab, the city of Aaron's heights. Woe to you, Moab! You are destroyed, people of Chemiosh. He gave, he has given up his son as a fugitive and his daughters as captives to Sahan, king of the Amorites. But we have overthrown them. Hashbon's dominion has been destroyed all the way to D uh, Dibion. And we have demolished them as far as Nophahal, with which extends to Medaba. And so Israel settled in the land of the Amorites. And after Moses had sent spies to Jazir, the Israelites captured its surrounding settlements and drove all of the Amorites who were there. And then they turned and went up along the road toward Bashan and Og, king of Bashan, and his whole army marched out to meet them in battle at Adarai. 
And the Lord said to Moses, Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do not let him uh, do to him whatever you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who regained in who who reigned in Hashbon. And so they struck him down together with his sons and his whole army, leaving them no survivors, and they took possession of his land. Balak summons Balama. Numbers 22. Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all the Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. Now the Moab uh, said to the elders of Midian, This horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the fields. And so Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab, at that time sent messengers to summons Balaam, son of Beor, who was at Pethero, near the Euphrates River, in his native land. Now Balak said, A people has come out of Egypt, and they covered the face of the land, and have settled next to me. Now come, and put a curse on these people, because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that whoever you bless is blessed, and whoever you curse is cursed. And the elders of Moab and Midian left taking with them the, free, uh, the fee for dimension. And when they came to Balaam, they told him, what Balak had said. Spend the night here, Balaam said to them, and I will report back to you with the answer the Lord gives me. And so the Moabite officials stayed with him. God came to Balaam and asked, Who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, sent me this message. A people that has come up out of Egypt covers the face of the land, and now come and put a curse on them for me. Perhaps then I will be able to fight them and drive them away. But God said to Balaam, do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed. The next morning, Balaam got up and he said to Balak's officials, Go back to your own country, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. And so the Moabites official, officials returned to Balak, Balak and, the, and said, Balaam refused to come with us. And then Balaam, uh, so, so the Moabite officials returned to Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. And then Balak sent other officials more numerous and more dear. Uh, this distinguished 
than the first. And they came to Balaam and they said, This is what the uh, Balak son of Zippor says, Do not let anything keep you from coming to me, because I will reward you handsomely and do whatever you say. Come and put a curse on these people for me. But Balaam answered them, Even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. Now spend the night here so that I can find out what else the Lord will tell me. That night God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them but do only what I tell you. And Balaam's donkey. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moabite officials. But God was very angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road opposite him. Balaam was riding him on his donkey, and his two servants with him. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field. Balaam beat it to get it back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards with walls on both sides. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it, so he beat the donkey again. And the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow path uh, where there was no room to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lied down under Balaam, and it was angry. And he was angry, and he beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, "What have you done to your, uh, to, what have I done to you to make you beat me? This, uh, these three times." Balaam answered the donkey, "You have made a fool of me." If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. The donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. And then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. And so he bowed low, and he fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because uh, your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times you if you if it had not turned away i would certainly have killed you but by now but it i would have spread uh, spared it balaam said to the angel of the lord i have sinned i did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me now if you are displeased I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with these men, but speak only what I tell you. And so Balaam went with Balak's officials. When Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town on the Arnon border. at the edge of his territory. And Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send you an argument, uh, an urgent summons? And why didn't you come to me? Am I really not able to reward you? Well, 
I have come to you, Balaam replied, but I can't say whether I whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. Then Balaam went with Balak to Ketera Hazoth. Balak sacrificed cattle and sheep and gave some to Balaam and the officials who were with him. And the next morning Balak took Balaam up to the to Balma Bell and from there he could see the outskirts of the Israelite camp. That was numbers twenty through twenty two. Uh, now we will be turning to Mark seven one. That which defiles, Mark 7. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and they saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders and when they come from the marketplace they do not eat unless they wash and they observe many other traditions such as the washing of cups pitchers and kettles so the pharisees and teachers of the law asked jesus why don't your disciples live according to the traditions of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands. And he replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about the hypocrites, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship him in vain, or they worship me in vain, They worship, uh, sorry, they worship me in vain. Their teaching are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of suddenly setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corbin, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus, you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. And that was Mark 7, 1 through 13, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Numbers 23 through 25 and Mark 7, 14 through 37. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be a messenger of uh, your word. And so I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see us tomorrow, because God willing, we'll be here. And we hope that you are too.